Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Madeline Lane Dugan, and I am the Community Engagement Coordinator at the Rufus Porter Museum of Art and Ingenuity, located in Bridgeton, Maine. Welcome to our first virtual lecture of 2024. Tonight's presentation is about Jonathan D. Poor and the Norton murals presented by Jane Radcliffe. In 2011, these mur murals were remo <laughs> removed from a house in Baldwin, Maine, and will be installed in our new building next month. Before we begin, we ask that you please have your microphone muted and your camera off. There will be a Q&A session at the end where you will be able to speak directly to the pre presenter, or you can simply type your question into the chat box at the bottom of the screen at any time, and I will read those out at the end. We also wanna make sure you are aware that this presentation is being recorded. For those of you who are not familiar with the Rufus Porter Museum, we were founded in 2005, and our mission is to celebrate the life, times, and legacy of a remarkable 19th century New Englander through preservation promote, and promotion of creativity and invention. Rufus Porter is well recognized in the folk art world for his wall murals. However, he was much more than just an artist. He was a musician, teacher, inventor, and founder of the Scientific American Magazine, which is still in publication today. Our mission, our, our museum campus, is home to two historic homes, the circa 1840 John and Maria Webb House and the circa 1790 Nathan Church House, which is one of Bridgeton's oldest surviving buildings and the original headquarters of the museum. We are excited about the soon to be completed addition to our third building, the Graham Gallery. We offer permanent and special exhibits, events, classes, lectures, and other educational opportunities that further our mission. Our open season is mid-June to mid-October, after which we are open by appointment. To learn more about us, please visit our website at rufusportermuseum.org, and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or even Twitter. Ah, uh, it's now called X. If you're unable to visit us in person, we do offer an online tour on our website as well as virtual access to our museum collection. I would like to present our speaker for the evening. Jane Radcliffe is a partner in Museum Research Associates, a two-person company based in Hollowell, Maine that provides collection management services to individuals, museums, and historical organizations throughout the United States and abroad. Jane's current long-term work includes a collections management project at the Vaughn Homestead Foundation in Hallowell, Maine. Previously, she served the Maine State Museum in a variety of capacities, including fulfilling the positions of registrar and curator of domestic and fine arts, and later as adjunct curator. Jane is the co-author with Linda Carter Lefko of the 2011 groundbreaking book, Folk Art Murals of the Rufus Porter School, New England Landscapes, 1825 to 1845. She is also a former member of the Board of Directors of the Rufus Porter Museum and a founder and immediate past president of the Center for Painted Wall Preservation. Jane's educational background includes a BA in History of Art from Connecticut College and an MA in American History and Historical Museum work from the University of Connecticut in a program sponsored jointly with Old Sturbridge Village. Jane is happy to speak with you this evening about the signed and dated murals of Jonathan D. Poor and to follow the evolution of his style and signatures over the span of his mural career from 1830 to 1842. Welcome, Jane. Thank you, Madeline, very much. Um, I guess I should start by saying that if you know about Rufus Porter, tonight you're going to hear more about his, his, um, his nephew, Jonathan D. Poor. Jonathan, and we're going to be, as, Ma as Madeline says, we're, we're going to be following Jonathan D. Poor's, Jonathan D. Poor, who lived from 1807 to 1845. We're going to be following his mural painting career, which did indeed range between 1830 and 1842 in signed and dated works that we know of. And there were probably other signed and hopefully dated works out there that are still to be discovered. We wanna follow the evolution of his style as it matured through the signed and dated murals. And as I say, there are many more of his that we're not going to look at tonight um, and that may still be out there unknown, undiscovered. So if you find any, please let the Center for Painted Wall Preservation know. I'd like to start out by contrasting a little bit between 
Rufus Porter and his nephew, whoops, oh dear. Adeline, do you know how I advanced? Okay. <laughs> the the uh, slide on the left is a scene from the Howe House that was in Westwood, Massachusetts, done by Jonathan, uh, Rufus Porter in 1838. Um, there are several things that, that I'd like to point out here, and I notice that I keep <laughs> I keep moving my finger because I'm used to speaking with a laser pointer, and I keep wanting to point out things to you. So I'll try to let you know what I'm trying to talk about. Rufus Porter always used what he, or very often used what he called cultivated fields. And you can see those here coming down from the house up the top and coming down through the fields with different colors. Um, Jonathan D. Poor, who is one of his works is on the left, on the right there, um, was a lot freer, a lot less formalized or formulated in his works. And a couple of the things that we see in this, which is from the Dudley Haynes house in Reedfield, Maine, um, are things like the, the, the farmstead that he likes rather than a, a more um, village type of scene that his uncle used. And Jonathan was very much into apple orchards and you can see a good one there. As Linda said, um, or or <laughs> we were talking before, there have probably been about 115 or 120 murals or muraled rooms that have been attributed to Rufus Porter. Um, when Linda and I were doing our research, we really came to believe that a lot of those, I mean, a lot of those are actually by Jonathan D. Poor, to whom uh, Rufus Porter signed three murals all in Massachusetts during his career. Jonathan D. Poor, um, to whom about 35 or 40 had been attributed, signed 12, and there are many more that we know are actually his. This is a, a wall from the Burbank House in Mount Vernon, Maine. Um, it's the, this is a full wall. It's the first mural known to have done been done by Jonathan D. Poor, and Actually, it's signed and dated. We'll look at that in a minute. But it um, is stylistically very much like that of his uncle Rufus. Um, it's quite stark. Um, and there are several motifs that are, are more, more likely to be found in Rufus Porter murals than in Jonathan Poor. But let me see. Oh, I was going to point out. Right under, let me see, if you look at the little man in the sloop, that's almost in the middle of the, the scene in the in the foreground there, down to the left of that in the um, foreground is a signature which says J.D. Poor, 1830. And I'd like you to try to remember what this signature looks like, because as we go through and see the different signatures of Jonathan D. Poor, it's interesting to note the variations and in some cases the, the sameness of his um, signatures. This is a fireboard that was done by Jonathan D. Poor. You can see his name, J Jonathan D. Poor, right at the, at the bottom there, and the date 1831. The, the JF is probably the person for whom he painted it. Um, we I don't know, we don't know where it came from, um, but it is now in the collections of the Shelburne Museum in Vermont. And Jonathan probably did a lot more other items too, in addition to murals. Um, there are some boxes that we believe um, have been paint, were painted by Jonathan. Again, one of which has been attributed quite sharply or quite, mm, people were quite, uh, adamant in their attribution, but um, attributed to Rufus, but we believe were by Jonathan. This is just a signature, again, um, obviously a close up of it from a, from a house in Vienna, Maine, which is not that far from Augusta. It's in the whole 
area around which actually it's where go. where Jonathan right there. it's where Jonathan D. Poor's in 1832, which is the date on this, married a woman named Caroline um Porter. Caroline Porter's fam uh, was a cousin of Rufus Porter's mother. And um the the uh the young poors lived in 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 uh, Vienna for at least a little while. Um, the signature is now in the collection of the Vienna Historical Society. Here again, it was a situation where people got, had bought an older house, were going in, and were going to had to take had out, to out walls wall. in order to to um, add insulation and deal with the electrical. Uh, connections in the house. And so this piece was saved and um, is now in the Vienna Historical Society. This, and I'm sorry, this is, <laughs> this is an, a newspaper article from 18, 1936, which talks about several murals were in the, what was called Bachelor's Mills, which is a section of Chesterville, Maine. Um, and it's talking about several murals in that area that were have since been lost. Um, the article talks about that there was one painting, one mural that had that was signed and dated J.D. Poor, 1834. So apparently there were about five or six houses in Chesterville that were done by Jonathan, none of whom, as far as we know, are still extant. And this is Jane, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the connection is breaking up. Is there any way you can get closer to the source of your internet? I don't know where it feeds from, but that last slide we couldn't hear. Yes, they all house. And again, this was 
actually one of the first houses that I got to Probably in the mid 1880s, if we were over. Um, it is one of my favorite. Despite this, the signature of this house came from a long downstairs wall. This is the kind of the house that is all faces in the society of which and the hallway. Go back here. Are some of the characteristics of Jonathan D. Poor that distinguish him from Rufus Porter? One of the things is, is the sumac um, bushes or shrubs or whatever you want to call them, but the red or or dark um, dark brown actually they are um, flowers on them. But on this house, right right below. Let me see. Anyway, here's the signature. It's in pencil. It's very delicate. It's hard to see. This is one of those places where when Linda and I went, and I went back to revisit the house with Linda at one point, and I walked in and I looked along that wall and I said, oh, good, it's still there. And the homeowner said, what's still there? <laughs> because I had, because the signature is so delicate, so um Hard to see, actually. It's um, it's in that clump of two bushes that are almost in the middle of the uh, slide here. But here you, you can see it. You can't see the J very well. The D and the P. And again, up the road from the, the, the those other houses is the Sweat House, also in the same town here. Again, with a um. A, a hallway and up the stairwell with the murals. Again, this is the wall that's along your right as you're entering the house. And here we have up in, let me see. Okay, if you look in this slide and see where the tree that's resting in the crotch of another tree, if you look right below that where the, the curve of the, tr the uh, branch is, we have this signature. And I don't know how well you can see it in the slide, but the J, the D, and the P are quite distinctive. The J has a nice curve to it. It's a, a very nicely formed letter and the J and, and the P. This is a Peterson house in Standish, Maine. These, this was once a, um, a tavern and as far as we know, the, the former owner of the house said that there had been murals in other areas of the house besides the ones that we're going to look at, which are in a large room upstairs in the building. Um, here we have the overmantel in that room. Again, things like this, this little, what I call the overmantel village um, that appears in a number of different configurations but very often in an overmantle done by Jonathan D. Poor. And if you look just to the left of the large red building, the three-story white a red building, you can see a signpost. Here's the signpost, it's wonderful. It has a little birdhouse up at the top, but even more wonderful to me is that on the signpost, is printed Hotel JDP. And some people have said, well, maybe the, the homeowner didn't want him to put his signature in the house. And so this was a very subtle way of having his signature appear. We're not sure, but um, again, the owner in that house had, not, had never noticed the, um, the signature itself. We have two Massachusetts examples of Jonathan D. Poor murals that had been signed. Um, this one is the Prescott Priest House in Groton, Massachusetts, and you can see it on the paddle board, uh, the, uh, on the, the board on the paddle box there. And this one, and I apologize for this slide, but on the stern board, the curved stern board of this um, sailing vessel, it again is in red, the JDP.
back in Maine, we're at the um, undated, but I, I think later 1830s, is the Dud Dudley Haynes House, which is in Reedfield. Um, the mural wall from the mural, mural room from this house was removed and is now at the Shelburne Museum in Vermont. And again, the um, signature had been on the, the stern board of that largest of the sailing vessels, um, but has really been, has deteriorated to the point that it's very hard to see, but we do have documentation that it had been there. One of the things that I might point out in this slide is the little red bird sitting on the stump of that tree. Um, it's a scarlet tanager and Jonathan Depor loved birds. He especially loved birds of different colors with black wings. And we've got scarlet tanagers very often. We've got yellow birds with black wings that Madeline says perhaps are female scarlet tanagers, which are quite green actually. And in one place in the um, Norton house that we're going to be looking at in a little while, um, there are black there are black birds with gray wings. So they are very much a Jonathan D. Poor characteristic. In this same house, there was this uh, this scene in a mural. And one of the things that I loved is one one of the times when I went to this house, I walked in the front door and I went into the mural the mural room. And it suddenly occurred to me that the house that appears here, this little farmhouse, is the, is the house in which the mural appears. And let me go back a couple of sites. This is the house as it looks now. Again, if you look at the little farmhouse, it's the same house. And um, that's another thing that I've discovered in a, sorry, I started going back and looking at all my other pictures of, of houses and Jonathan Depor murals. And indeed it does appear very often that the house itself is in the, the um, mural somewhere. I love that John, <clears throat> Rufus Porter always had very straight line and formal um, fences. Jonathan D. Poor's fences are never really formal, and they, they sort of meander all over the place, as you can see here. This is from a, okay, up the street from the Dudley Haynes house is the Judge Bean house. Um, Dudley Haynes house is at the bottom of the road. Dudley, uh, Jonathan, <laughs> Judge Bean house is at the top of the road. And another sailing vessel with a signature, mostly gone, but if you look at it in exactly the same, the correct light and in the correct um, angle, it does indeed have a J.D. Poor, and I'm not sure if it might have had a date, actually. It does have the J.D. Poor signature um, on there. And this is a scene, again, from the, the Judge Bean house. And again, it, this looks like that house. I, I don't have a good slide of the exterior, but this is what the house looks like. And one interesting thing is that although the barn is gone, if you go the appropriate distance from, proportionately the appropriate distance from the farmhouse, the foundation for the barn is still there. And the last signed one, the, the, the latest signed signature that we have of Jonathan D. Poor is this one, which said J.D. Poor, and it's wonderful, I love it. If you look at them, you, you can't see it that well here, but after the J and after the D are commas, they're not periods, there's, and then there's a, comma, a period after the poor. So it's J comma D comma poor period 1840. Um, Unfortunately, this was taken out of an abandoned and deteriorating um, house in Mercer, Maine, and we don't know where this is at now. Um, at my point, it was sent from the library in 1880. I first started to look for it. They didn't know where to go, and when the student was lost, at least they had a signature. Which is 
Jane, Jane, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you've cut out again, and this is the most important part. So, <laughs> um, a little better. This is the house that the murals came from. This is the Norton house and all these murals are gonna be put in our third building, just so everyone understands. I'm gonna mute myself again, but. You're still cut out, but I'm, I'm just trying to narrate along in the chat because I know what you're gonna be talking about roughly. You came back on fine the last time, but I will narrate along because I know pretty much what you're saying. I remember. is one of the, the the full length of one of the upstairs bedroom walls and there's a couple of details that I really wanted to point out that you would never have seen in a Rufus Porter mural uh, they are just so unlike Rufus Porter about halfway along between the two side right in the middle um at the on the ground on the foreground is a man with a gun he is shooting at a bird, which if you go over to the left side of the scene and go below that large sailing vessel on the ground in front of those, that sort of like double bush to the, in front of that, to the left of that broken tree is a raptor, either an eagle or an osprey eating a songbird. But this is a kind of detail that is very strongly Jonathan D. Poor. And I think really, it gives me its charm. Linda calls it extraneous fluff. I, I call it wonderful detail. This is the wall, another wall in the same room. And one thing I wanted to point out, a couple of things I want to point out in this slide. But first of all is, Notice that the mural has been painted to accommodate the built-in bookcase that was already there. Again, we've got wonderful sort of meandering fencing here. And if you can see again, again in the house, to the left of the house is a another one of those signposts with a, with a um, birdhouse up on the top of it. 
but unlike the one in the um the Peterson, this one, rather than saying Jonathan's name, says Hotel, no, Norton Hotel 1840. Another wall in this house is opposite the fireplace wall and has a wonderful, again, um, farm scene with the orchards. There are tanagers in the trees. Um, but one thing I wanted, I love to point out, and this is one of my favorite scenes. You notice the house, you notice the barn. If it, between the house, between the house and the barn in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the yard there in front, there is a clothesline with laundry hanging on it. In front of, or at the side of the barn, there are dung piles. Um, uh, the, the Judge Bean house in Reedfield also has manure piles by its, its, um, its barn. This is how that wall, as it extends to the, goes and curves around or the scene uh, continues around where the walls meet. So it's a whole, the whole room is a whole continuous scene. Again, here's the signature and some of the, some of the birds um, and, the, <laughs> and the sumacs. Um, it's very prominent. As I say, as you walk up, it's, it's, it hits your eye as you open, as you go in the front door. The uh, punctuation and the 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 um, lettering is the same font or or style of lettering that was seen in the Burbank House, which was done um, ten years earlier. And Doctor Norton, both there were two generations of doctors that lived in the Norton House. And my theory is, I don't have any proof. But my theory is that somehow Dr. Norton was involved in caring for Jonathan D. Poor's wife, Caroline. Um, as I, I, I don't know if I told you before or not. <laughs> um, this house is up the road. It's, it's not that far from Jonathan Poor's parents' house. And in 1840, Caroline um, Poor died, um, and whether Dr. Norton had something to do with with continue keeping her, her alive longer or what, I don't know. But it is very unusual to have such spectacular um, and, and large signature, and I don't know what the connection might have been. Um, as I say, Caroline died in 1840, the poor he she and and uh, Jonathan had, had married in 1832. When she died, she left him with four children under the age of ten. Um, and in 1843, he married her cousin Clarissa Barton from Windsor, and they apparently he apparently moved to Windsor and lived there. He is buried in the churchyard there in Win Windsor, um, having died in September of 1845. So there's a lot more to show you. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to do it tonight because I don't have that much time. But I would say I am so excited um, about what's going to happen next month. And I can't wait until this summer to see the, um, the Norton House murals actually appear in a building at the Rufus Porter Museum. I would welcome any uh, questions or comments. Thank you, Jane. At this time, anybody who has questions, you can put them either in the chat and I'll facilitate that, or you can unmute and put your video on and ask away. I unmuted it. Yeah, I have a question. Um, how do they uh, take out a wall? What's, what's the process? for saving a wall or transporting it to another area. I, I can see it on right. yes. the grain. I mean, do they take the in, the entire structure, including the lath, the plaster and everything? Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. As you can see here, okay, the 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 mural was in this upstairs um bedroom there. And so what they did was they took the exterior off and then took and sawed it so that we had all of the, the murals in sections and had a a um a crane and moved them into into a um into a truck and took them into storage and sometime very soon they're going to be coming out of storage and traveling back to, uh, traveling to um the Rufus Porter Museum and it's very exciting I'm just so thrilled about it it is um you can find on our YouTube page a recording of a virtual lecture given by David Ottinger, who was instrumental in the removal of the murals and the installation of them in the Graham Gallery, and I'm pretty sure is attending tonight. I have one question, it looks like. Uh, Lydia Littlefield is asking, is the source and type of watercolor known? Okay, Rufus Porter. In, in one of his early instructions books says, uh, he, he wrote a book called Curious Arts, which is all sorts of, of things to do. And one of them was he was convinced, he's writing as though a homeowner can do this himself. And so Rufus Porter in his instructions for what he calls painting on walls of rooms says, take a pound of glue and dissolve it in a gallon, I think, of water. I'm I'm fuzzy on those now, but it is a water-based um, paint that he's using. And then he talks about mixing in the the um, the the different pigments. But yeah, it is a water base. Um. Elliot Bradley commented that there will be information about the preservations process in the new gallery, which I can confirm. Um, Linda Littlefield uh, said, I read these paintings were painted on dry plaster. Yes. Yes, they are not what, what people call frescoes, which is what a lot of European um, murals were done. They were done on pla on wet plaster. Um, these are indeed what would be called secco. Um, they were done on, on dry plaster. And in a number of houses, um, both murals and stenciling were often done a number of years after the house had been built. Um, in a number of cases, I think that they were the, 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 <laughs> the sort of the redecorating of a second or third generation in the house. Um, Norton House is unusual in that these were painted within about two or three years after the house was built, but they were not done on, you know, in a brand new house, usually. Okay. Um, Elliot Bradley asked, I'm curious about the brushes he used. Do we have any information about that? And I'll just preface it by saying, I know that corn cobs were involved. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't, I, I'm not an artist. I have to admit, maybe Linda Lefko, if she's still here, can, can uh, answer a bit better about the brushes than I can. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, uh, no, there's no evidence of corn cobs. There's all kinds of mystery corks and all kinds of silly things. Um, you can tell that they used a very similar brush because you're going to find the same treatment on the foliage of the trees in a house in Vienna is Burbank. I mean, it's just they're very, very similar tools, um, brushes. But what Jane is saying was primarily true. We have noted, though, in some cases, the murals were done shortly after the houses were built because people have removed the distemper paint and it's like a blotter. The walls are like a blotter. So I would say they were done while before the plaster had totally cured, which is usually almost up to a year. So it's 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 interesting. But these walls, um, when Jane and I sat with the folks that owned this house, um, the Norton House, and they committed to donating the walls to the museum. Um, he was very concerned that the wa the walls would be damaged with the traffic of the the install or the reactivation of the of the railroad, which Jane mentioned. 
but the house itself, as David did each section, and I know this question has been asked a couple of times, and I know Jane, Jane can't see the questions, but as, as, as each portion of the walls were removed, they David stabilized the walls and repaired the house. So the house is still standing and, total, and, and totally repaired. Thanks for answering that question. Sure. I'm not getting any other questions in the chat box. People are welcome to try to turn their video on or unmute themselves and ask a question. I don't see anything coming in. I have another question in reference to the painting. So if obviously you you can't um, do this painting process when the law when the wall was painted, did they replaster in some of these houses? Is there something underneath? You know, if if they do it, if, if they didn't paint on new plaster, could they have done paintings by replastering the wall and then painting? I'm just curious. Yeah. Jane, you went out on that explanation. I don't know if you're coming back in. Sorry. Can there I was help a with this? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Linda. Um, the so when I say they weren't they weren't always done when the plaster was fresh. Once the plaster is cured, and as Jane mentioned, oftentimes it was two or three years after the house was built that the walls were decorated, either stenciled or muraled or freehand brushstroke. But um, when when they were still fresh, say before a year, the paint kind of penetrates into the plaster coating. Does that answer your question? I think he's muted now. Oh, he's unmuted. Yeah, it it does answer the question. I was wondering if uh, paintings would occur, say, after covering was already on the wall. Did they replaster if they wanted the mural? Or during that don't time? don't need to replaster if there's plaster on the wall. You just paint on the plaster. No need to replaster. But I, I was wondering if there was paint on the wall. Oh, actually, I know of, of at least one place where there was a blue paint on the wall um, that was painted on oh. top of okay. the um, the house, the house, the uh, captain, the um, Samuel Benjamin house from Winthrop, Maine, which belongs to the state museum. There was there's a room at the state museum that came out of that house in Winthrop where when the museum's conservators were working on it to try to patch up some of the um, some of the damage over the years, um, they discovered that there is indeed a base blue over the whole wall. So apparently, and this is one that we know was, was painted a number of years after the house was built. And so apparently the, the wall had been blue and it was painted over with murals and they just didn't have to do much blue on the um on the sky because it was already blue. So okay. they did paint over other paint. Yes. Thank you. Um Sloan, sorry if I pronounce this correct incorrectly, Autry asked, what started your amazing journey on this research topic? <laughs> I was a history of art major in college. And when I got my first job, which was at the Maine State Museum, and I came up, it was before the museum, it was while the museum was in the process of being built. 
it wasn't opened yet. We hadn't put in the exhibit yet. Um, but when I first came up, I discovered that the museum owned a set of the, these walls that had come out of the house in, in Winthrop and that we were going to be putting them up once we had exhibits. And so I began to do some research and I got absolutely fascinated. And that was in, I came up here in January of 1971. Um, and I've been fascinated by him ever since and I still am. So um, that's how it started. And I was, I was concentrating on Maine because I was working at the Maine State Museum. Um, but I began to find more and more and I got to, it got to the point where the people at the Maine, Pres Maine Historic Preservation Commission and others um, knew that I was interested. So if they heard of some, they'd let me know. And so I was having fun traveling around the state and learning all about these. Linda and I, I think, met first at a historic, Historical Society of Early American Decoration Conference at one point in the early 20. 20, 20, teen, 20 aughts. Um, and at one point ran into each other at an auction and got talking about all of this stuff again and said, you know, all the research that's been done on these things or all the research that had been published on these things had been published um, at the latest had been in like 1968, which was Gene Lippman's book on Rufus Porter. And we had learned a lot of things that we thought, you know, were different things that needed to be documented. So that got, got us going. Linda lives in New York, in upper New York state. I live in Maine. And we had a lot of very long phone calls <laughs> between the two of us. And one weekend on the coast in Maine, um, trying to work and, and produce a book. But it's still fascinating to me. I still love going and looking at new ones. Or looking at, every time I look at a, a one that I've seen before, I still find something new in it. I mean, I know that every time I look at the, the uh, Norton walls, I see something new. Terrific. We've got a bunch of questions that just came in. And if Jane does go out again, Linda, I'd appreciate you to pipe up. <laughs> Very helpful. Um, uh, Lydia Littlefield asks, was there any known connection between itinerant portrait painters and itinerant decorative painters, i.e., I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Ami Phillips and either J.D. Porter or Rufus Porter. Okay, Ru J J Rufus Porter, Rufus Porter was one of these people who would get very involved in some activity for a short period of time. And then all of a sudden he would drop that and go on to something else. Excuse and me, Jane, are you saying he was ADD? I think, <laughs> I think yes, Linda. <laughs> And, <laughs> and before he got really into mural painting, he was indeed a portrait painter of miniature portraits, um, both portraits and silhouettes. And so there is that whole, and he was an itinerant, definitely. Um, before he came back up here and, and really got into mural painting, Rufus Porter made a trip as far south as Harrisonburg um, Hot Springs in um, what, West Virginia, um, traveling and doing mostly portraits. And there are a couple of signed um, Rufus Porter portraits. And there are a few Rufus Porter portraits at the uh, Rufus Porter Museum. So you can, if you get there, you can, you can see those. So yes, they were an itinerant thing. I think Jonathan Poor was much less itinerant than his uncle. Um, he was quite, he was, he wasn't all that old when he got married. He had a family, obviously quite young. Um, and her family was in Vienna. Um, and he was listed in the directories at that time as a farmer, although he never owned any land um, according to the deeds or anything like that. But um, he did travel to around Maine, I believe. He did get down to Massachusetts, obviously. But um, he was much less of an itinerant, but his uncle was very definitely itinerant his whole life. Excellent. Uh, Kathy Snyder asks a question that somebody had a response to that I'll read Kathy's first. Is there any other evidence of actual flowers except on the fireboard? And David said that the Tricky House has similar flowers. Yes. Yeah, it's really interesting. The Tricky House 
which um, was in Westbrook. And the murals from that house, which are Jonathan D. Poor, um, are now, I think, still in, in storage, but at the Huntington Museum right. and Library. Pasadena, yeah. With the area, yeah. Um, and in the tricky house, the overmantel had a thing which looked like a stenciled um, flower box, flower basket with flowers. But there are flowers in in um, in JDP and in in Rufus Porter. Um, as I say, Jonathan Poor tends to use that those sumac bushes um, in his foreground with the what he has as red flowers or whatever you call those. I don't know if they're flowers or fruit or what they are. Um, which actually now, if you see them in the fall, are usually uh, quite a bit browner. But there are also um, there are flowers. There were wonderful rose bushes in front of the the um, building at the Norton House in the over over mantle there. Right. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else. Other flowers. But you're right. It's it's not as many as um, as there are of of other. Motifs. It's it's interesting that um, somebody pointed out that the murals that these guys painted, um, oh, never. <laughs> there's never snow, and Rufus Porter in one of his early um, newspaper advertisements says something about it's a wonderful. I can't quote it direct uh, directly now, but it's something to the effect that gentlemen who desire verdant hills. Um, even in the winter, can look at it because I can paint them on their walls for them. So interesting. I didn't even think about that till just now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Elliot Bradbury asks that you mentioned JDP's love of birds, level of detail, and meandering fences as being things that set his work apart from Porter's. Are there any other ways in which their works are distinct? Yeah. Yeah, I think just the whole detail in Jonathan Poor's. And I also think that we see a much more, I, I at least, and I'm not as much an expert on Porter as I am on Poor, I have to admit, but I see much more of a development in Jonathan D. Poor's style over the period, the 12 years in which he was painting than Porter's. Porter seems to have established for himself a pattern of what he wanted to do and he describes it and he did it jonathan poor if you remember the first painting um in the burbank house is very much like that but over the years we can see he adds details he gets more interested in the details and he adds a much better sense much more fun i think sense of whimsy in the paintings that he did during the 1840s right Porter was more of a recipe guy. He established yeah. a recipe yeah. and he painted his murals according to the recipe. Whereas yeah. Poor is, is he's just a joy to to look at. And by um, the way, the, the Norton House walls are the creme de la creme of all yes. the of all the poor walls. Yep. Yep. Uh apologies if I'm not pronouncing this correctly. Rien or Renee? Rien? Wells asked to please repeat the titles of authors, titles and authors of recommended books. Why don't you send out a bibliography? <laughs> I could, I could okay, do that. Jane's got a bit. Jane's got one she can send you. Yeah, yeah. if you send me that, yeah. I can send it to the group because I'm going to email okay. everybody tomorrow anyway. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I'll send it to you when I get home. Uh, again, sorry for the mispronunciation. Neven or Nevin, wait, Carling asks, do either Jonathan Poor or Rufus Porter have surviving day books or account books? Unfortunately, we haven't found any yet if they did. Um, I, I, you know, my, my dream, it, that would be my real dream, but even, even finding a diary from somebody in some town who says, Jonathan Poor is in town and he's going to paint the Norton's house and I like what he's doing. So I think I might ask him to do mine too. Um, 
we don't have any of that 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 has been found yet. No, unfortunately. Uh, wouldn't that be great? Like uh, to read about uh, yes. them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes. So Can I interject something funny that happened? Mm -hmm. I was giving a lecture at Sturbridge years ago, and Drew, Julie Lindbergh was there, and she had purchased a wonderful collection of um, water or of portraits done that were attributed to Porter, and one of them was of an elderly man, and a, a relative of Rufus yes. Porter's attended the the, the <laughs> attended the lecture. And he took one look at the portrait of the elderly man and he said, oh my goodness, it's my mother. <laughs> so yeah. there are relatives. Oh yes. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yes, there are still relatives. And it's interesting that of the four children, um, we don't know much about three of them, about the second boy and the two girls, but one of the sons, Leander Poor, um, became a quite quite prominent um, jurist and also was in the state um, legislature for a while here in Maine. Uh, we have an in interesting uh, post from Sloan Autry and speak up if I'm not... Uh -huh. um, uh, presenting your question or statement. It looks like it was a description of a diary perhaps, but it says, quote, taken a residence for a very few days at Wesson's Coffee House and offers to paint walls of rooms in elegant full colors, landscape scenery at prices less than the ordinary yes. expense of papering. At other times, talk of healthier. Those gentlemen desirous to spend yes. the gloomy winter months amidst pleasant groves and verdant fields are respectfully invited to apply as above where a specimen of the work may be seen and correct likenesses in full color, $2. November 20th, 1822, Providence Patriot. Yes, yeah, it's a news, thank you Sloan. It's a, um, it's one of his uh, newspaper advertisements, yep. Terrific. Linda Littlefield. And so at that point, he's talking, he's talking at that point still, he's beginning to get into um, murals, but he's still talking about portraits too. And is that, who's speaking there? Is that, is that Porter? That's, or Rufus. That's Rufus Porter. Porter. Huh. I'm going to copy and paste that right now. <laughs> it's, I think it's quoted in um, Lippmann's book. Which I oh, wish I Or in our in book. Our book too. <laughs> Hold on, sorry, I just stepped away to copy and paste that into a document before I lost it. One yeah, it's in, the, it's in the book. Okay. Um, Lisa C. Mare, I'm a relative, third cousin, five times removed of Rufus. My oh. great grandmother was a reporter. And I have to say, as working on our Curious Art series on genealogy, if you could please email me at staff at rufusportermuseum.org. I'm trying to work on creating the genealogy of Rufus Porter's family and with all the children he had, it's going to be very laborious, but <laughs> yes. I would love anything that can be sent to me so that I can build family trees that come out of him. And I'm really, really looking for current relatives to maybe highlight in an e-news or something. Okay. Any other questions? I'm going to see if anybody's unmuted. No. Back to the beginning. <laughs> well, um, let me put my video back on just to. Um, I'll send out an email tomorrow that's a survey. Um, I hope that Linda and I, through my typing, were able to help uh, when the, the internet wasn't cooperating. Yes, um, I'm sorry. Bibliography from Jane. I'll send that out to everybody as well. And if you get the email and think of somebody that might want an additional one, just let me know. Give me their email and I can send things along. And again, if you hear of anything anywhere, we would love to know about any murals or stenciling or freehand painting that um, may not have been documented. That's one of our major problems for the Center for Painted Wall Preservation. Thank you. Absolutely.
Thank you, Jane. Oh, Julie Lindbergh said there's a printed book of the Porter genealogy available. Julie, I will be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. I'll give you like a minute or so. Anybody else has anything? Okay. Terrific. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Jane, for yes. presenting. And I look oh, forward you. to the, the monumentous few months that are coming our way. Yes, indeed. It's going to be so exciting. Yep. <laughs> Thank yep. you very much. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Take care. Have a good night. Good night. Bye, I'll be in touch.